Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for this beautiful new day and we thank you for the opportunity again to meet together at our various devices to watch this lesson that you have prepared for us today. Please bless your word to our hearts, Lord, and make us to be more like you. Amen. Hello everyone, and it's great to be able to share again about another one of our heroes of the Bible. So let's jump right in. Esther was a young Jewish woman. She was born into a broken family. She was a minority in an oppressive society. The odds were against her right from the start. But almost overnight, Esther went from rags to riches, from poverty to the palace, and she became the wife of King Xerxes I, making her one of the most powerful women in history. Irony seems to fill the pages of the Book of Esther. Just as Persia has unknowingly crowned a Jewish queen, the king's visor, a man named Haman, is plotting a diabolical scheme to exterminate the Jewish race through a bloody massacre. massacre, massacre, massacre. There is only one Jew in the land who is in a position to intervene on behalf of her people. It's Esther. But it seems as though the pleasures of the palace had begun to intoxicate her. She begins to struggle with what course of action to take. As Esther looked around at the beautiful palace that was now her home, with its luxuries, pleasures, conveniences, and the wealth she had come to enjoy, it must have been difficult for her to imagine throwing it all away in some misguided attempt at heroism. She knew that taking this matter to the king would force her to risk everything she had including her very life. Perhaps a more subtle approach would be best. Maybe she should just lie low for a while and wait to see how things would play out. Perhaps at some point she would have an opportunity to put in a good word for the Jews without jeopardizing herself. After all, what good would she be to anyone if she were dead? dead. dead. But Mordecai, Esther's cousin, sensing her internal struggle, sent her this message. Do not flatter yourself that you shall escape in the king's palace any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from elsewhere. But you and your father's house will perish. And who knows but that you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Although you might be thinking that we're focusing on the story of Esther today, actually I'd like to speak about a hero that is often overlooked. Today I'd like to speak about Mordecai. When we think about the story of Esther, the life of Mordecai might seem a little less important than this extraordinary story of Esther. But you know, Mordecai was more than just an uncle who took her in when her parents had died. He was her mentor. He was a strong leader who stood up for what he believed in. When you read the book of Esther, you will see that Mordecai was very instrumental, ensuring the safety of not only Esther, but the Jewish people. And he also exposed treachery in the kingdom. I believe in his actions, Mordecai characterized qualities that you and I should be embracing in our own lives today. Wisdom, compassion, faith, courage, and hope. These characteristics represent someone who was placed in a situation by God, where he had to stand up for the rights of those around him and not hide in the shadows. Mordecai became a man who was not only raising a little girl by himself, but he saw in Esther an inner strength, an anointing by God that she could not see in herself. I believe that Mordecai was compassionate to the needs of others. It is obvious from the very start of the story that Mordecai's heart always beats for the needs of those around him. He took in his orphaned niece after her parents had died, and even when Esther was older and she was taken to be groomed to be the next queen, 
Mordecai was not far away from her, even waiting outside the quarters with a constant concern in knowing how she was doing. He also showed an intense compassion for those around him when he learns of the plan by Haran to have the Jewish nation killed in the kingdom. The Bible tells us that he did this by wearing sackcloth and ashes and showed his sadness over the tragic order of Haran to kill off the Jewish people. You may ask yourself the question, what is the meaning behind him wearing sackcloth and ashes? Well, it was a public display of grief and remorse. It might seem a little bit strange, right? But I believe that we do things like this in a small way even today. There have probably been situations in your own life where you have displayed the same deep compassion for those around you, for wearing pins or shirts or even particular colors to remind you of a loved one fighting against a health struggle. Like when we wear a pink ribbon for those struggling with breast cancer. Or I remember personally, as us as a family, we were reminded about Denver having a heart condition. In those days, we quickly learnt that September was CHD Awareness Month and that we were encouraged to, to wear on the 29th of September a blue and red ribbon in support for all those who struggle with heart conditions or called congenital heart diseases. Or even in our very church, that soon on the second Sunday of November, we'll be wearing poppies that remind us of those who have died in the line of duty. You see, we, like Mordecai, have a heart that beats for the fellow men and women around us, that we need to do something to show that they matter and that they loved by us. Another attribute that I believe that Mordecai has is that he was never one to buckle under pressure. He was proud of his Jewish heritage and could easily recognize within people whether they had good intentions or not. That was never more obvious than a time when he encounters Haramon, who was the second in command to the king. Haman's position meant that all in the kingdom were forced to bow down to him at the order of the king. But we read in the Bible, Mordecai does not follow this order. And it is for this very reason that Haman plotters, plots revenge against Mordecai, with a plan to kill not only Mordecai, but all the Jewish people. Even though there was a strong possibility of death, Mordecai does not back down for standing up for his beliefs. These actions proved that Mordecai believed that being true to his belief was more important than anything else. Mordecai also had hope in God's calling and provision. One of the most celebrated verses in the Bible comes from the lips of Mordecai. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. When Mordecai was speaking to Esther about what she must do and that she must be the one to tell of Haraman's plot, he doesn't lessen the truth that when the king discovers that Esther is also Jewish, she will have the same fate resting upon her as her community. What he tells her to do is risky. But Mordecai also gives her hope that maybe this difficult position she finds herself in was planned by God, that she had to have that moment where she needed to be there. After this encouragement, Esther, we read, goes on to fulfill her God-given destiny. All throughout the book of Esther, Mordecai's faith in God shines through to be a beacon of hope to those around him and a source of strength to Esther. His words and actions reflect a man that wasn't into following the crowd or being famous, but it was rooted in standing up and sometimes standing up by himself alone on what he believes. Because of this, God greatly blesses Mordecai as he strives to remind others of God's protection for them. These unexpected blessings from God were not meant to elevate Mordecai, 
but more it was meant to show God's continued mission for the peace in the kingdom and a continued reliance on God that Mordecai had. By doing what he knew was God calling him, Mordecai was blessed by God and was placed in a position to continue God's mission on a greater scale. Mordecai teaches us today to be more compassionate for others and stand up for our beliefs. But I believe most importantly, the story reminds us that we all could be called by God, like Mordecai, to be leaders in our faith and examples for others. May you be blessed today. Amen.